let me let Sister Cheryl in. And as always, we should have our Bibles. I'm going to pull up mine. All right. So if you got your Bibles with you, paper, pencils. So our memory verse tonight comes from Revelation 14 and verse 12. If you'd like to say it together, we can do so. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. All right, quick pop quiz once again. What is the faith of Jesus? All in the testimony, obeying the commandments, spirit of prophecy. Spirit of the prophecy. And where would we find the a verse that correlates to this one? that lets us know that the faith of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? For Revelation, I can't remember. 12, is it? Revelation. 12, well, 12, 7, 12, 17. Thank you. Let you know that, yes, that those individuals that are this remnant, they keep the commandments of God. And once again, it does say, they have the faith and they have the testimony, excuse me, of Jesus Christ. And you obviously said earlier that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So I ask, is there a verse in Revelation where we can have a definition then of what we mean by the faith of Jesus or the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy? You might remember what that verse was. Uh, 19, verse 10. There we go. Revelation 19 and verse 10. That gives you an answer to the question as we have here. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of God. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. All right. Now let's take this verse apart. As I said, I was going to do every week. So we're going to take Revelation 14, 12. So when it says patience, patience means this is steadfast endurance in other words we need to be steadfast we need to endure it's going to be needed in view of the ter ter terrific crisis to which these faithful souls must pass which includes the threat of boycott and of death now how do we know that if one goes to revelation 13 verses 11 through 17 you learn about the crisis and you also learn what we're going to go through, and, and including not being able to buy or sell unless you have that mark. So therefore, those of us who are going to be on the side of Christ, what is it that we need that will protect? The seal of God. Yeah, the seal of God. So through all of this, there will be those who will faithfully endure and prove loyal to God. Saints, now last week in church, I heard several times people going on about being sinners. It seems like we spend so much time calling ourselves sinners and yet, there are various verses in the Bible where it says, like God is holy, like Christ is holy, then what should we be? Holy. Holy. And yet, someone will go, well, you know, this poor sinner. So we don't seem to spend time on being holy or doing what it takes to be holy in the sight of God. So therefore, when you see in Revelation 14, 12, this word saints, 
it means holy one. So you've got to really think about uh, in the Bible, over 260 some odd places, you find the word sin. And there's not one place that it's appealing. And sinner more than 60 some odd times, and it's never good. So here, saints, it means holy ones, these faithful children of God are dedicated to humbly obeying his inspired writings and will for their lives. So in other words, they're working on being holy. They're not working on sinning. They're not constantly walking around going, I'm a sinner. Their focus is on being holy. Then keep the commandments, right? Keep the commandments. The message from God in Revelation 14, 12 is this. Here, in contrast to those who receive the mark, are the ones who I approve. Look at them. This little group is standing true. Now, but how can we identify who they are? Well, they are the ones who are keeping God's moral law, all 10 of its precepts. So if we continue with the, with the belief that we can't do it, then yes, we default to being this saying we're a sinner, and thus we must end up hoping we will be saved in our sins. That's not what the Bible says. Now, those same people that are spoken about in Revelation 14, 12, remember, what did we learn about those same people in Revelation 14, 5? No guile. Yep. No guile. No guile found in their mouth. They are faultless, blameless. I guess we have to figure out how do we get to that point? If it can't be done, then how are these people going to do it? The keeping of the Sabbath is a sign of loyalty to the true God, him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. It follows that the message which commands men to worship God and keep his commandments will especially call upon them Remember to keep the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. Why will that be so important? That's a sign between us, God, and his children. Okay, and obviously the Antichrist has to have a counterfeit. Right. Yeah. So what is this counterfeit? Sunday. Sunday. It's going to be Sunday. That's why this uh, Lucifer has his signet. Sun worship, and God has his, and that is keeping the original Sabbath. It's not the Jewish Sabbath, it's the Sabbath from the beginning. Great controversy brings that again on page 438. Then we come to the part of the verse where it says, the faith of Jesus. The Greek of this phrase can be translated as faith of Jesus, that is, faith that belongs to Jesus, or it can be translated as faith in Jesus, that is, by faith in Jesus. So we have to have the faith of Jesus. So they are the one, as we have now in summary, who are steadfastly keeping all of God's Ten Commandments. And they are doing it in the strength which Jesus imparts. How do they do this? Moment by moment, as they trust him. The two key identifying verses, right? Now remember, do you see that the high point, the high point, of the three angels' messages is the memory text we just read. 
Without that verse, we would not know how to avoid the mark of the beast. So if someone ever asked you, how do we avoid the mark of the beast? You should quote them, Revelation 14, 12. But now since we do know, do you see the high point at the end of chapter 12? Now let's go to the end of chapter 12. Also clearly identifies the remnant, the faithful people of God in the last days. Commandment keepers, and they have the testimony of Jesus. So Revelation 14 provides the final warning message about the mark of the beast that must go to all the world. It climaxes with a clear statement as to how to avoid receiving that mark. Here is Revelation 12, 17 again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Who is the woman? And who is the dragon? The woman is the church. The woman is the church. And what kind of church? Is true church, the one that all right, so as opposed to the false church, right? So the dragon has a church and he's going after God's church, God's, in other words, the bride, the woman, the true church. So the dragon is wroth with the woman. Now, does he go to make war? with all of the churches? No, the remnant oh, is the last church. Why is he remnant going after the this remnant? Remnant means what, last. What is this remnant doing? They're keeping the commandments of God and they have the faith of Jesus. So you're saying, Terry, it's not done away with? It was it nailed no, to the cross? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, can we, we, would can we worship we would any have... day of the week we want? No. Uh, These, um, this remnant is steadfast as saying that the commandments should be obeyed. Now, obviously, we have those in other denominations that would say that's legalism that you have a gospel of works. What say you when someone says that? They say you have a gospel of works. Can't be saved by your works. Do you ever say you to them, have to do them but you can't, it doesn't mean that you got salvation. Do you ever quote the Bible to them? Um, yeah. For instance, um, for instance, if the if the commandments are done away with, right, and someone, and let's say you have a conversation, and you say, "Well, what do you constitute according to the Bible?" If you ask them. Can you give me a verse in the Bible that lets me know then what is sin? Because we have one. We should be able to say back to them, well, according to the Bible, mm -hmm. sin is what? Transgression of the law. The transgression of the law. Now, if it is, and also we find that in the New Testament, which we have many denominations that refuse to read the Old Testament, and if they're bound to the New Testament, then wouldn't they, in this particular case, not following their own logic? 1 John 3, 4, for sin is the transgression of the law. What law? God's law. Right, there we go. 
And then obviously, is it okay to break God's law? Now, it sounds con contradictory to on one end say we don't have to follow it, but then, then say to someone, oh, well, I guess I can and lie, no. commit adultery, no. bear false witness, you know, and, and so on. Where is, the, where is the standard? This remnant has a standard, and the dragon is wrong because it has a standard. So here we have the two key verses, each climaxing one of the two major sections of Revelation chapter 12 and chapters 13 14. and 14, both identifying God's people in the final crisis before Christ's return. God arranged this so there could be no room for doubt. Obedience by faith will be the final test. It will be either obedience to the papacy or obedience to God. Also keep in mind, let's go back to Revelation 12. I'm sorry, 14. Let's go up one verse, verse 13. Isn't it interesting that after verse 12, the next verse said, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the, the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. And what is the next part? And their, and works. their works do, do follow them. Follow them. Follow them. So we're told to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Those obviously, when the three angels' messages were given, the actual time frame, and from that point on that they were given, if one was to die at that particular moment or ongoing, it says, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their work do follow them. Now, when that ends, verse 14 says, and I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp Sickle. So this is letting us know the people who are going to be the faithful ones, those who die, obviously, henceforth from after the message being given, and letting us know about the harvest judgment. What will be our guiding item? Obedience by faith is going to be that final test. So if we can't find a way to get off of constantly going on about being a sinner and spend more time on working on being holy, we're going to have a problem. The ceiling you mentioned earlier. Everyone will receive either the mark of the beast or the seal of God. Those who are the redeemed will have the seal. Okay, how do we know that? Go back to Revelation 7, verses 2 through 4. Revelation 7, verses 2 through 4. Now keep in mind, in verse 1, if you have in your Bible titles above certain sections, mine says here, the mark of God's servant. And then we know in verse 1, we read, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. What does 
What is wind a symbol of in the Bible? Strife. The Holy Spirit. Strife. Absolutely. It deals with strife. So holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Now, can anyone tell someone here, when those winds are let go, what do those winds in terms of strife represent? Plague. The plagues. So therefore the plagues can't happen until certain events take place. Mm -hmm. Verse two, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of God. Now, why ascending from the east? All right, how many of you have that new Revelation book that you were given? If you went in the book to chapter 7, verses 2 through 4, you would find something very interesting. Why does the angel come from the east? Saints, this is the direction from which the glory of God and Christ at his second advent first appeared. You can read about that in Ezekiel 43, verse 2 through 5, and also in the Great Controversy, page 640 to 641. God's faithful ones will have his father's name written foreheads. Well, how do we know that? Revelation 14.1. If somebody would read that, Revelation 14.1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So this is the same people that we are reading about in Revelation 7, 2, and 3. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Okay? So they have a character like God. So I'll go back to my redundant statement. So how much time can we really spend on talking about being a sinner? If we, if we preoccupy our time with sinning, or I am a sinner, as opposed to helping one another understand what we have to do to gain the character, oh, we're going to be doing a lot of wasteful time. Amen. God's law is a transcript of that character. Remember verse 5. They are without fault before the throne of God. So since the law is written in the mind, the seal of the law, obedience to the Bible Sabbath, is there also. And remember, we have others who are saying, you don't have to follow the law. Long as you just turned your life over to Jesus, that's it. Don't you worry about anything. You don't have to keep his law. If that is not an oxymoron, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't have to keep his law. How do they answer? Um, okay, so how do we go without sinning then? 
What's the formula? We don't have, if we don't have to keep the law, then what standard are we living by? Ex exactly. What is the standard? And then how do they understand what Paul said? Remember Paul's statement about I only knew sin because of what? Except, except I knew the law. Yes. Because the law is a mirror which shows us sin. And then imagine speaking to them. And so what is sin? Well, it's the transgression of the law. Of the law. So if there is no law, then there's somebody no want, sin. Somebody want to finish that? Then there's no sin. There you go. Satan is something else. So thus we see that the opposite of those having the mark of the beast, Revelation 14, 9 through 11, are those having the seal of God, Revelation 14, 12. They are accepted and honored by God, the God of heaven. Earlier, the seal of the lawgiver, now this is important, must show three things. One, his name. Two, his official position, title, or authority, and sole right to rule. Three, the extent of his dominion and his jurisdiction. Now, what better place to look to find all three of those items but in the fourth of the Tenth Commandment? It's right there. And to 11, beginning in six days, we get the Lord's name, we get his office, yeah, he's creator, of heaven and earth, which is his dominion. Mm. It's right there. Mm. Or do we take Satan's signet, hmm. his mark, which would bear his name, his position, his title? Gotta make a choice. The fourth commandment alone, therefore, contains the seal of the living God. This commandment shows God's authority to enact the entire moral law and require our obedience. It also shows all other gods to be false gods. Example, what is the Pope's actual title? What? What is the Pope's actual Holy Father. Holy. Okay, so he's the Holy Father, and yet the Bible says to call no man holy. holy. That's right. right. Wow. He's also called the Vicar, Vicar. Right. of Christ. What does that mean? That he Vicar. is Christ on earth. Oh, my God, he's Christ on earth? Mm -hmm. I guess that makes sense now, why someone would kiss his hand. Well, why he all right, and everybody else who comes into his presence must defer with a dark outfit on. Because he's God on earth. Hmm. Something to think about. That ain't What's right. the largest denomination of Christianity on earth? Catholic Church. Catholic. And what does the Catholic Church call all the other churches? Mm. <laughs> In fact, when you think about it is, remember, the Counter-Reformation was started to bring the blank 
back to the mother church. So all the other churches are then the daughters. The, the, uh, okay. Do they recognize any other church on the same level with them? No. 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 Catholic means what? Universal. Universal. It's the universal church. And they thought to change time. Did they not change the Ten Commandments? Yes. And how many yes. commandments did they change? The fourth one and um, the oh, last. Oh, one about the images. Not right. worshiping the images. Right. right, so that they would be able to do that. I thought you can't change God's law. Revelation 22, 18, 19 talks about that. Mm -hmm. This commandment shows God's authority to enact the entire moral law. Hasn't the Catholic Church made it very clear that one of the reasons for celebration of the Resurrection Day mm -hmm. they call it the Lord's Day. Day. Mm -hmm. Do they not say that when you read in Revelation chapter 1 about John standing in the Lord's day, mm -hmm. that that ascribes to Sunday? Yes, when it doesn't. No, and there we, and, and so we have to keep all of this in, in mind. What are we told? Isaiah 8, 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the what? Seal the law. The law among my disciples. Don't, isn't that clear evidence why so many denominations do not read the Old Testament? Seal the law among my disciples. Obedience to the Sabbath commandment is a sign that we belong to God and acknowledge him as our creator. Brother Kurt, you said earlier, Ezekiel, I mean, uh, no, you said Exodus, but Ezekiel 2020, and hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a what? Sign. Sign. Yes, sign. Me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Amen. So God's faithful one will once again have his father's name written in their forehead. They will have a character like God's. They are without fault before the throne of God. God's law is a transcript of that character. Since the law is written in the mind, the seal of the law, obedience to the Bible Sabbath, is there also. All right. Now, you see, we took a, a long time there on that one verse, but it's important. Now we can now be able, in the last half of this lesson, so if we shouldn't preoccupy our mind on sin, rather focusing on being holy, then we should be able to answer the following questions tonight, which deal with this lesson. How should we fear God? What does fearing God mean? Fearing God in a practical way. Fearing God every day. How can we give glory to God? Remember the title of the lesson, Fear God and Give Glory to Him. 
So shouldn't we then spend the balance of this lesson then discussing for the benefit of someone out there who could be struggling, how should we fear God and how do we give glory to him? All right. So let's take that. Now we open the floor up. How should we fear God? Mm. Number one, by keeping his commandments. Amen. Okay. That's one. Anyone else? Jimmy? How should we fear God? Through obedience. Okay. Keeping his commandments, being obedient. Anyone wants to share? Reverence. Spending time in the okay. Word with you. All right. I, I heard someone say reverent. Just in case, what do we mean when we say reverent? Respect. Okay. So we've got commandments. Right? Mm -hmm. Someone said obedience. Respect. And Anything praise else? to him. Say that one more time. Praise to him. Praise. Okay. So if we're if we're being obedient, as you said, and we're praising and we're keeping the commandments, and we're revering him, if we spent more time doing that, then, we would, then our mind would be less occupied on what? The world. The world, but what else? Something we talked about earlier. I said, I told you I heard last week, right in Sabbath, people going on about being a sinner, and all I said was, we seem to spend so much time on that, but not a lot of time discussing how we can get the victory over sin, how what the things that we could do to, to, to help us gain a, a, a greater relationship. So this question comes up, how should we fear God? And you gave some examples. Prayer. So shouldn't, shouldn't that be a greater focus? I think reading the scriptures more. Yes, that's another one. That's another one. Remember your great controversy. The scriptures are what to safeguard. us. It's our safeguard. That's the is by reverence. inspiration of God. Yes. Reverence, though, so in the if you the definition is a deep respect. Yes. I was looking, I was looking that up. Which is why um I know in our denomination and some others, we don't like to call pastors reverend. Because the only person you're supposed to revere is God. Amen. And the Bible does say holy and reverent is his name, meaning God's name. Right. right. So having said that, if we go, for instance, Genesis 22, 12 says, and he said, lay not your hand on the lad. Remember, we're talking about Abraham here. Neither do you anything to him. Now, this is why he didn't want him to slay his son. He says in the second half of the verse, For now I know that you what? Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Now, think of all the things you just said that you said are definition of fearing God. And here is God telling Abraham, so 
I know you keep my commandments. I know that you are obedient. I know that you respect See, we have to be able to identify this for others and ourselves so that we, ha we have a blueprint mm -hmm. for getting over the issues that we have. So we just don't constantly go on. I, I'm just, I, I, I was conceived in sin. And, and then you just live on that. You go on and you never work on that other part. <laughs> Here's another one, Nehemiah 5.15. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside 40 shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. Now notice this, this last part. But so did not I because of what? The fear of God. Fear of God. So if I know God, I'm not going to do certain things. Right. Let's take this in totality in terms of this verse. Those who tr truly fear God will not dare to do anything cruel or unjust. Mm -hmm. Let all who are in public places remember that they are so placed to do good, not to enrich themselves. Nehemiah mentions it to God in prayer, not as if he had merited any favor from God, but to show that he depended upon God only to make up to him what he had lost and laid out for his what? Honor. Nehemiah evident, evidently spake and acted as one that knew himself, okay, there's that part, right? To be a sinner, he did not mean to claim a reward as of a debt, but in the manner that the Lord rewards a cup of cold water given to a disciple for his sake. He may have said, yes, I am a sinner. But was he trying to get the victory? Yes. Was he trying to live a godly life? Yes. The fear and the love of God in the heart and true love of the brethren will lead to every good work. These are promises of justifying faith. Remember that faith of Jesus. And our reconciled God will look upon persons of this character for good according to all they have done for yes. his people. Excuse me, Brother Carl. Yes. Nehemiah, uh, the, I didn't hear the chapter. If you Nehemiah, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 5. And I Thank read you. verse 15. You're welcome. Verse 15. Thank you. Fearing God means to revere him, to respect him, and to admire him. It involves being loyal to God, and here's a key part, and surrendering to his will, not our will. Can I add something to you? Please. It's also offering our bodies, like Paul said, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. And if we would reverence God, we should also have the mind of Christ. 
yeah. thinking on things that are set where Christ is seated at the right hand side of God. And so that what Christ is doing is what we desire or delight in doing. That's another way to reverence them. Yes, absolutely. And there, and when you said your statement, you had in that statement about your body a living sacrifice. Holy. If we keep spending so much time on sin, we're not going to spend time on trying to be holy. We must know God in order to fear him. We must understand who he is and what he can do in our lives. Like Abraham, we must put our focus on God instead of on ourselves. God has to be first in our lives. It has to be. All right, so then that leads to another thing. Okay, so we've discussed now how to fear. What is the most practical way that we can show that we fear God according to Moses in Deuteronomy 6.2? If someone would read that. Deuteronomy 6.2. And remember the question is again, what is the most practical way that we can show that we fear God according to Moses? Deuteronomy 6.2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, Thou and thy son, and thou son's son, all the days of their of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Okay, so there we go. So there, so there was something there we learned in the Old Testament. Now let's take this a step further. What does Solomon state in Ecclesiastes? There's my tongue twister. Ecclesiastes. Thank you, sister. I always I struggle with that word that so much. 1213 about fearing God. Sounds let very similar us, to Moses. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Wait a second, hold on. I thought <laughs> the commandments are done away with. How can it be the whole duty of man? Hmm. So I got to fear God. I have to keep his commandments. But didn't Jesus get rid of the commandments? No. No. Well, wait a no. second. Here. I thought in Matthew chapter 2, in Matthew chapter 2, isn't it verse, I think, 20? Oh, what is my verse? Oh, well, what did I see? My, and I'm always quoting this one about Jesus being Lord of the Sabbath and not, and he's basically telling everyone that. He came to fulfill the law, not to do away with it. And if he came as a man, tempted in all points as we are, yep, and we his whole to. duty was to fulfill the law, did he keep the commandment? Yes, he, yes did. he did. So why would he come to earth to keep something that we can't do? He came to earth to keep it and show us how we could do it. Yes. So is it our whole duty? It is. Yes. Yes. Fear God and keep his commandments. 
Exactly. You know what he's saying? Keep his commandments. It's an example to say you don't need to keep the commandments. Now, being that so many of them love to use the New Testament, here is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And the question is, does grace exempt us from keeping God's commandments? Here it is. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a what? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then notice this verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ unto what? Good works. Good works which God had before ordained. What did he ordain? That we should walk in them he ordained. When you think of an ordinance, what is another word for an ordinance? Commandment. Commandment. Law. Which God hath before ordained that we should do walk, what? Walk in. walk in them. Walk in what? Commandments. So if this was not important, why not knock out verse 10? No, we cannot work, knock out verse 10 or any other verse that he's quoted. There's a, you know, when we talk about that cheap grace, they, they, they pound on grace and love, love the idea of being saved in your sin. Can't do it, man. It's been nailed to the cross. So here's one. Did Jesus play down the law? Or did he exalt it and encourage us to obey it? He exalted it. He exalted it. Here are some examples. And you would think that this would make it so crystal clear. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Picture someone coming to Jesus and saying, so... You came, so we don't have to follow this law anymore, right? So when you, as you told us, when you die and rise, that the law has thus been fulfilled. Imagine Jesus coming back and saying, verse 17, oh, no, no, no. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy I came to fulfill. And then let's say you said to him, well, what do you mean by fulfill? And then he says in verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Huh. So it's so Jesus, you mean that it's not just you dying and being resurrected. Are you saying that we need to follow these commandments? Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. Now, let's just stop there for a moment. <laughs> Think about all the people that teach commandments are done away with. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to follow that. These those people, those people and those adventists and people like them, they're preaching like and yet it says here, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> But whosoever shall do and teach them, 
the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Does it make you wonder that when they read it, are they kind of blinded that they don't see this? How do you not see this? He says it very clearly. I came to prove that it can be kept. I'm telling you, it will not pass until earth and heaven, heaven and earth pass. I'm telling you to tell others to keep it. But if there's somebody out here that tells people to not keep it, you shall be least in the kingdom. Seems clear. The Bible interprets itself. Mm -hmm. What other ways beyond? Now, here's a good one. What other ways beyond just keeping the commandments near God every day? Maybe by sharing the life God's given us okay. with others. Absolutely. Are you talking about our testimony? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. How we live our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be a way. Every day. And let's say we have somebody that says, can you give us some verses on that? Deuteronomy 6.13 Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Matthew 6.33 we should tell people to do what first? Seek the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all what will be added? Be added unto you. All and right. All these things shall be added unto you. Okay. And Hebrews 12, 2. We should look unto Jesus, who is the right and good of our faith. Yeah. He is the author. And the finisher, who for the joy that we set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And where is he now? Sitting down on the right hand, the throne of God. Because he should be revered. Mm -hmm. His father. Now we come to the last part. We talked about fear. How can we give glory to God? Hallelujah. There you go. Keep going. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. That's right. Praise the Lord. Sorry. We send up our hallelujahs to him. What, is, what are some other ways, saints, we could do this? I've heard some of you give some of the most beautiful prayers <laughs> where you constantly use a word. We even call our choir that sings beautifully every week, our blank team. Praise team. Praise, Praise team. team. Praising his name. Glorifying him. I recognize that he sets the standards. He establishes the, per the uh, perimeters as it relates to the care of my body I am God's prophet. I recognize I need to choose to do whose will his will with my body and depend on God to help me do it 
-hmm. I bring glory to God by worshiping him, witnessing for him, caring in such a manner that I hear to his established laws of health. Have I not been told by my doctor, keep your A1C in check? Carl, you better lay off that sugar. And my doctor tell me, I want you next time I go to the doctor in June, wants to see even more improvement. Well, that's a woman on earth. What would God want from me? Carl, are you following the laws of health, happiness, productivity? What was our last quarterly on? Stewardship and longevity. This would include endeavoring to live by the eight laws of permitting the Holy Spirit to move me, to possess the mind, the spirit, and the attitude of Christ. And with his enabling power, always conduct myself in a Christ-like manner wherever I am. In other words, when people see us, they should see Jesus in us. See Christ. See Jesus. They should see Christ. That's how we can glorify his name. Now, who can fear God? Who? Who are the people that can fear God and give glory to him? Who are these people? Hmm. Have we talked about these people in our lesson tonight? Yes. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Then they are those who can fear God and give glory to Him. Sister White says as we close, from the Desire of Ages, chapter 73, page 668, all true obedience comes from the heart. It was heart work with Christ. And if we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims. So blend our hearts and mind into conformity to his will, not our will, his will. That when obeying him, we shall be but carrying out our own impulses. The will refined and sanctified. I always love the fact that she brings in sanctification. There are some who like to focus on justification, but not the sanctifying part. She says the will refined and sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Set apart. Set apart. Set apart his delight in doing his service. When we know God as it is our privilege to know him, our life will be a life of continual, as Jumi said earlier tonight, obedience. Through an appreciation of the character of Christ, through communion with God, now, here's the part of that sentence. Sin will become what to us? Hateful mm -hmm. to us. So, should we focus on making sin hateful to us?
Um, if sin, in other words, sin will become hateful to us. We will hate, hate sin. to do and hate sin. Right. Then obviously, if we hate sin, going back to the top of our lesson, because we fear God and want to give him glory, then our focus should be on what? Praising God. Praising God and living a life that mm -hmm. us is living a life that is because in our, in our memory text. Holy. Ready? Ready for that? Accepting the call of the first angel to fear God and give him glory sanctifies us by the grace of God. The sinners keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. Is that what it says in Revelation 14, 12? Mm -hmm. The sin. sinners keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Is that what it says? No. The sins. What's it? Oh, Oh, the saints keep, huh? And at the beginning of this lesson, we said that the saints are the holy one. They try to live a holy life. Revelation explains the future glory will be reserved for the victors. The victors of what? That you what are, victory are we talking about? Yeah, victory, victory over sin. Overcome sin. Okay, and, and so, as you see here as we close, Revelation, in fact, let's take it and close with this. Somebody read Revelation 2.7. Revelation 2 and verse 7. Oh, okay. That had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hmm. Someone go down to verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be he be hurt of the second uh, death. Because yeah. which death do we want to be a part of? The first one. The first death. Will somebody go to verse 17? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden uh, manna. The, ma manna. the manna. And I will give him a white stone, hmm. and in the stone a few. Uh, a new name written which no man knoweth save in he that receives it. Okay, let's go to 26 to 28. He that overcometh and keepeth my what? Work unto the end. To him will I give power over the nation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Verse 28, and I will give him the morning star. Let's go on. Revelation 3, verse 5 says, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father 
and before his angels. Verse 12, he that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is what? What is his city? New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Verse 21. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father, in his throne. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Finally, verse 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is not legalism. It is a victory through Jesus Christ, whose perfect life of perfect righteousness and that alone is what gives them the promise of eternal life. Can we do this on our own? No. Yeah. Is it a daily work? Yes. Do we need the Holy Spirit transforming our lives? Absolutely. Do we need to be steeped in prayer? Yes, we do need that. It is faith in action. It is transforming, life-changing, miraculous grace in the life of the believer. Would someone like to either give a final statement or to close in prayer on this particular lesson? I lost my thoughts. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd like, Miss Gloria, I'd like to put two people on a prayer list um, okay. Richard yeah. Williams and Ben Fitz. Where Ben lives, the whole facility was just closed down today because they have people with COVID. Oh. So, there's about 200 residents, mm. and they are all sealed in their room, so mm. at least for seven or eight days. Mm. Mm. And Richard is not feeling very well, he's got some heart issues, and um, I'd like to keep him in prayer also. Okay. And then who and, was the se second person you said? Richard Williams. And Dan Fitz. All right. My sister, would you like to lead us in prayer on that? I can. <laughs> Dearest Heavenly Father, what we have learned today is such a blessing. We, we have so many knowledgeable people and people that you have given many gifts to, and each of us share those gifts. And Lord, we ask here, <clears throat> sorry, we ask your blessings, Lord, to come and be with all of us. We ask you to help us to live your glorious ways. And to let the Holy Spirit into our heart and our mind and to lead us always through you. And let our 
will go out the window and let yours come in our heart. Oh Lord, we have so, so much to be grateful for, each and every one of us. We ask, Lord, that you bless all of us on your Sabbath, your holy day, and give us, sorry, I'm having a hard time breathing, and give us your Holy Spirit in us always. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Heavenly Father, please, Lord, please watch over Brother Richard, Brother Ben, and those who are right now uh, being not being able to go out because of COVID. I know that COVID, Lord, spread so many different ways, but we ask for your healing hand. We ask for if it is your will to touch their lives, to make them whole, keep them safe and well. Let this scourge pass from them. Let not the devil reign. Let their health be a testimony of your power over their lives, power to help them make it through this trial. We love our brothers and those others that are suffering at this time, but we know through you all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And we ask humbly tonight to keep them safe and make them whole. Also ask Lord tonight for my sister Mary Converse. She is teaching tomorrow. Mary always asks me, please pray for her. I know Lord, you will work through her. I know you will put the words that she needs to say in her mouth. I know you will give her strength, confidence, and that she will give a great testimony for you. And those who will listen will receive a blessing. I also ask tonight that the things that we discussed, that we take deeply to heart, I know I'm First, to basically understand things that I need to work on and work on daily. I do want to be a part of that first resurrection. Know the Lord right now, before he stands up, he is doing the first judgment. And it's the judgment of the just. And we want to all be a part of that judgment, that first resurrection. I ask the Lord, work with us daily. Place in us a, a mindset that we focus on you and less on the world that we are in and the things of this world. I ask you, too, to keep for those here who are struggling with ailments, I know my wife tonight with bronchitis and so many others who at this time with a change of seasons who are suffering allergies and other maladies. We ask again to Lord, keep them safe, keep them whole, keep them well. I ask all of this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. We'll take a quick break. The early writing piece is, is short, but it is very, very powerful. Just like last week, there is a powerful oh. statement in it tonight. Thank you. So let's, take, let's take a quick break. Brother Carl. Yes. 
I'm going to bother you again. I don't know what's going on with my lessons, but the last one I got from you was April the 3rd. And is yours the one that's 954? Not anymore. It's, uh, it's 305. Okay, I think I have that too. I thought I had you with... Nine five four was um the was my number. It's three o five nine three zero zero eight four seven. Three o five. I think I have it right. I'm pulling right now. Yeah, three o five nine three zero zero eight. Seven. I know we all get the things mixed up. Okay, and I actually do have three zero five nine three zero zero eight four seven. Okay, Carl. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Get it, get it. Get it together. All right. Okay, I got that, and I'll make sure you get the ones, the back ones. All right. Uh, hey, Carl. Yes. My Zoom has been going in and out all night. Is anybody else having that issue or is it just me? Did you know? I, I actually have that sometimes. Is there like when sometimes where I'm at, uh, we don't have enough cell towers over here. There are times that like when I send you guys texts, if right. I'm downstairs in my house, I it will say message fail every time. Okay. okay. It doesn't happen that often to me, so there's probably something going on with the towers. Yeah. It's just like it, I get it, and then it just starts spinning, and then I try to get back in, and I try. You know what? I, you know how it is. So okay, no worries. Yes. Got you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, if that's what's happening, I'm horribly embarrassed. <laughs> okay. Horribly. Horribly. <laughs> horribly. We can't, we can't horribly. Have we can't have that happening to you. Well, maybe it did. I don't want to describe, but anyway, it could have. <clears throat> I discovered horrible. my video was on. That would have been horrible. Sorry, guys. That's <laughs> no, okay. It's a love when you said horribly. <laughs> yeah, horribly. <laughs> horribly. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get my water and then... Uh, well, Cheryl, did you get your picture of the, uh, your friend? Okay, Brother Carl, I have a question for you. Yes. I received a letter today from someone named Denise Hamilton. And the address she gave me, I traced it. It goes to the Jehovah Witness Church that's on Cimarron that's near me. And she sent a pamphlet in it. 
And when I read the pamphlet and the, with the verses in it, do they have their own Bible? Yes. That's what I thought because mm -hmm. I could not figure out what was going on. And I said, that's not in the Bible. And I'm looking in my King James and I said, mm -mm, something's wrong here. It's yeah, they, wrong. they have the, what's called the New Translation Bible. Is that what it is? Well, this yeah, is and, and their Bible, um, years ago, Charles Taze Russell, they had to do that. It was the only way for them to make everything that they supposedly believe in mm -hmm. match to the Bible. Okay. So that's, you, know, you, you probably heard this, whenever you have to witness, a Jehovah Witness comes to speak with you, and let's say you you say, well, let's let's see what it says in the Bible. They will only use their Bible. Mm -hmm. They will not use yours. Right, because I have had them to come, and then they want to give me their literature. I say, I will take your literature if you take mine. And no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, not a open the door. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, did they by any chance recognize, okay, that's one we haven't gotten. So let's go back and harass her. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's the only thing that, in fact, I remember when we had the millennial man in front of the church, the only thing that we ever had in common with the Jehovah Witnesses, they believe in the resurrection. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what well, I got this pamphlet and I got the letter so I'm going to be answering her letter. And I have about seven tracks that I'm going to send it, put in there to address some of the things that, you know, they were supposed to be talking about in here. But of course, yeah, to, using their to, break, to break what they're talking about, and I guess they probably say the same thing with us. Mm -hmm. They are talking the opposite mm -hmm. way around. You would have to be able to sit down with them and have them openly accept that we have to look at something beyond mm -hmm. their own literature mm -hmm. because they won't. Okay. They won't do it. And they don't study the history of the Bible that they use. Mm -hmm. They don't look at the life of Charles Taze Russell. Mm. They won't go into that. It's, and I also remember, because I've had many a student who their families did not want them to get any form of a higher education. They didn't want them to go into certain professions. Mm -hmm. So if you keep people isolated, which I feel as, as an adventist, one of the things that you know that we go through is people say all kinds of things about us too, oh, but wow. we have to be willing. I, I would hope that I would never do the following. Well, somebody comes to me and they say something, I should not be afraid from a point to go through it. I know Sister White constantly said, you know, you don't go out here trying to deal with somebody on spiritualism. You stay away from that. Mm -hmm. But Bible, verse upon verse, you know, like line. They won't do it. Mm -hmm. They will not do that. Well, okay. I'm going to see how this is going to go because when I... I been read, I read it very carefully, and each one of the uh, texts that they have in here, I read my Bible, which is the King James, and saw what was incorrect from their Bible. And basically, I have a track for just 
everything that they have said. So that's what I'm going to put in the envelope and send back to my dear. Uh, and you know something? It may, and it just may be that God wants you to do that. I prayed about it, but I said, yeah. what? Mm -hmm. Why am I getting this from her? And I said, Lord, I got to pray about this. So just listen to me, please, and mm -hmm. help me out. And this, when I went, each text that she has in this pamphlet, I looked in my warehouse of, <laughs> of uh, pamphlets, and I found one for everyone that she's talking about in here. And their Bible is easy to, um, everything from Bible Gateway mm -hmm. has the New Translation Bible on there. Mm -hmm. um, the, and they end at JehovahWitnesses.org. They have their online Bible. Yeah, because they um, have it on uh, these uh, websites on here. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it is, www.jw.org. Yeah, the witnesses. Mark Finley's book, uh, the one about studying, mm -hmm. has in there the Jehovah Witnesses, obviously uh, other, there are other books the same way, but they definitely had no choice but to come up with their own Bible. Mm. There were too many conflicts that they could not get out of mm -hmm. with, the, with the King James and other Bibles that obviously do not jive with what they believe in. Same, you would find that the reason why the Mormons would be more on the Book of Mormon as to the Bible is because it it, it basically jives greater with what they believe in. Mm -hmm. and can't, can't do it from their Bible, mm -hmm. from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, having said that tonight, and you will probably find this very interesting. So tonight, I'm going to page, beginning from page 107, and I'll go through this real quickly. It says, many who profess to be looking for the coming of Christ seek more earnestly the applause of blank than the of blank. So if you go to page 107, I have late looked around to find the humble followers of the meek and lowly Jesus. My mind has been exercised. Now, notice this line here. Many who profess to be looking for the speedy coming of Christ are becoming conformed to this world and seek more earnestly the applause of those around them than the approbation of God. They are cold and formal. And then remember, she used this expression I'm about to say to you. The nominal churches, she said, like the nominal churches from which they but a short time since separated. The words addressed to the Laodicean church describe their present condition Perfectly, and we all know about the Laodicean church. What was the number one characteristic of that church? Lukewarm. So then she goes to page eight. What's wrong? What wrong priorities do some seven day Adventists have? In other words, in this case, Adventists have. They are neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm. Unless they heed the counsel of the faithful and true witness and zealously repent and obtain gold tried in the fire, 
Now, doesn't this sound like the last lesson? White raiment and eye salve. He will spew them out of his mouth. In terms of counsel, what counsel is given regarding vocal praise of God? Page 110, we talked about praise earlier. Let us follow Jesus as he so meekly rode into Jerusalem when the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitudes said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. A large portion of those who profess to be looking for Christ would be as forward as the Pharisees were to have the disciples silence, and they would doubtless raise the cry. Fanaticism, mesmerism, mesmerism, and the disciples spreading their garments and branches of palm trees in the way would be thought extravagant and wild. But God, there it is, now here it is, but God will have a people on the earth who will not be so cold and dead, but that they can praise and glorify him. He will receive glory from some people. And if those of his choice, those who keep his commandments, should hold their peace, the very stone. So instead of acting out their faith, what do many Adventists, professed Adventists do? She says, dear brother, brethren and sisters, do we believe with all the heart that Christ is soon coming and that we are now having the last message of mercy? that is ever given to a guilty world? Is our example what it should be? Do we, by, by our lives and holy conversation, show to those around us that we are looking for the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Who shall change these vile bodies and fashion them like unto his glorious body? I fear that we do not believe and realize these things as we should. Those who believe the important truth that we profess should act out their faith. She said there is too much seeking after amusements and things to take the attention in this world. The mind is laid too much upon dress and the tongue is engaged too often in light and trifling conversation, which gives our profession for our conversation in heaven once we look for the Savior. It's very pointed here. What do what will be the true Christian's joy and amusement? Okay. The true Christian's joy and and consolation must and always will be in heaven. The longing of the souls, those who have tasted of the powers of the world, to come and have feasted on heavenly joys, will not be satisfied with things of the earth. Such will find enough to do in their leisure moment. Their souls will be drawn out after God. R remember, where the treasure is, there is your heart, your heart be also. Holding sweet <laughs> communion with the God they love and worship, their amusement will be in contemplating their treasure. What's the treasure? The holy, the holy city. city. 
the earth made new, their eternal home. And while they dwell upon these things, which are lofty, pure, and holy, heaven will be brought near, and they will feel the power of the Holy Spirit. And this will tend to wean them more and more from the world and cause them consolation and chief joy to be in things of heaven, their sweet home. The power of attraction to God and heaven will then be so great that nothing can draw their minds from the great object of securing the soul's salvation. All right? We want to glorify God. Now, doesn't that not sound like our last lesson? Mm. What is the principal cause of many traits to those who profess the name of Christ? Many who profess the name of Christ and claim to be looking for his speedy coming know not what it is to suffer for Christ's sake. So what does that mean? Their hearts are not subdued by grace. They are not dead to self, as it is often shown in various ways. At the same time, they are talking of having trials. But the principal cause of their trials is an unsubdued heart, which makes self so sensitive that it is often cross. If such could realize what it is to be a humble follower of Christ, a true Christian, they would begin to work in good earnest and begin right. So what does that mean? They would first die to self, then be an instant in prayer and check every passion of the heart. Give up your self-confidence and self-sufficiency, brethren, and follow the meek pattern. Ever keep Jesus in your mind that he is your example and you must tread in his Step. Now, I'm going to send the rest of you, the rest of this to you tonight. But when you go through it, I'm just going to give you some uh, titles here. On page 114, she talks about social meetings in early Adventist history where testimony services were prayer and public testimony was given by members of the congregation. She talks about the remnant are to overcome both by the blank, blank, and the blank. Well, what is the problem for some? Many who profess the name of Christ and claim to be looking for his speedy coming know not what it is to suffer. There it is again, for Christ's sake. Their hearts are unsubdued by grace, and they are dead to self, as it is often shown in various ways. So what are these various ways? Once again, keep in mind, self-sufficiency is one. We have these constant passions that we should be working on praying to get over. On page 115, there's a discussion about what counsel is given in regarding prayers and testimonies at a social meeting. In other words, how we should conduct ourselves. On page number 116, what duties will help to keep the people of God humble? In other words, you want to know what, how should we be humble? She goes into that. When we follow the humble Bible, what? When we follow the humble Bible way, we shall have the movings of the Spirit of God. All will be in sweet harmony if we follow the humble channel of truth, depending wholly upon God, and there will be no danger of being affected by evil angels. It is when the soul gets above the Spirit of God, moving in our own strength, 
that the angels cease, cease watching over us and they are left to the buffetings of Satan. Duties are laid down in God's word. Remember what we said earlier tonight? The scriptures are our what? Our way mark. Our way mark, our safeguard. Safeguard. The performance of which will keep the people of God humble, separate us from the world, from backsliding like the nominal churches, the washing of feet and partaking of the Lord's Supper should be more frequently practiced. This is on page 116. She talks about a problem some have that just received the truth. In other words, you became an Adventist, you received the truth, and she said, I saw that the strong hand of the enemy is set against the work of God. You know who else goes through that? People who get baptized. The moment you get baptized, Satan is going to come out. How many times have we heard about people who have been baptized who come to church less? They were going real strong and then they, they got baptized and all of a sudden you don't see them? Yes. She said, I saw that the strong hand of the enemy is set against the work of God, and the help and strength of every cause of truth should be enlisted. Great interest should be manifested by them to uphold the hands of those who advocate the truth, that by steady watch care they may shut out the enemy. All should stand as one. Brother Bud talked about this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The church needs to be united in the work. Mm -hmm. Every energy of the soul should be awake, but what is done must be done quickly. Mm -hmm. Then she talks about the third angel. He said, then I saw the third angel, said my accompanying angel. Fearful is his work. Awful is his mission. He is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tear and seal or bind the wheat for the heavenly garner, which we spoke about last week. These things should engross, she said, the whole mind, the whole attention. Then what, by what means does God expect us to be humble? Well, she said, Truth, saving truth, must be given to the starving people who are in darkness. She said, I saw that many prayed for God to humble them. But if God should answer their prayers, it would be by terrible things in righteousness. It was their duty to humble themselves. I saw that if self-exaltation was suffered to come in, it would surely lead souls astray, and if not overcome, would prove their ruin. When one begins to get lifted up in his own eyes and thinks he can do something, the Spirit of God is withdrawn. He goes on in his own strength until he is overthrown. She said, I saw that one saint, if he were right, the arm of God for the multitude together if they were wrong right would be of none effect this is very important things when you really think about here we are in this quarterly and just how this book seems to go right along at this early day did Ellen White urge Adventists to eliminate? Okay. Many have unsubdued, unhumbled hearts and think more of their own little grievances and trials than of the souls of the sinner. If they had the glory of God in view, they would feel for perishing souls around them. And as they realize their perilous situation, would take hold with energy, exercising in faith in God 
and hold up the hands of his servants that they might boldly yet in love declare the truth and warn souls to lay hold upon it before the sweet voice of mercy should die away, said the angel. Quote, those who profess his name are not ready. I saw that the seven last plagues were coming upon the shelterless heads of the wicked. And those who have stood in their way will hear the bitter reproaches of sinners and their hearts will faint within them. Said the angel, we have been picking at straws, dwelling upon little trials, and sinners must be lost as a consequence. God is willing to work for us in our meetings and it is his pleasure to work. But what does Satan say? Satan says, I will hinder the work. His agents say, amen. <laughs> Profess believers in the truth dwell upon their petty trial and difficulties, which Satan has magnified before them. So time is wasted that can never be recalled. The enemies of the truth have seen our weakness and God has been grieved. Christ is wounded. Satan's object is accomplished. His plans have succeeded. And thus, he triumphs. So, we're used carelessly together by some in prayer. He said, I saw that God should be used with reverence we talked about that earlier and awe the words god almighty are coupled together and used by some in prayer in a careless thoughtless manner which is displeasing to him such have no realizing sense of god or the truth or they would not speak so irreverently of the great and dreadful god you ever know people that go on about that? Who is soon to judge them in the last day, said the angel. Couple them that together, for fearful is his name. Those who realize the greatness and majesty of God will take his name on their lips with holy awe. Fear God and give glory to him. He dwelleth in light unapproachable. No man can see him and live. I saw that these things will have to be understood and corrected before the church can prosper. What does she see false shepherds walking with? She says, I've shown that the false shepherds were drunk, but not with the wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. The truth of God is sealed up to them. They cannot read it. When they are interrogated as to what the seventh day Sabbath is, whether or not it's the true Sabbath of the Bible, they lead the mind to fables. I saw that these prophets were like the foxes of the desert. They have gone up into the gaps. They have not made up the hedge that the people of God may stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. When the minds of any get stirred up and they begin to inquire of these false shepherds about the truth, they take the easiest and best manner to object, to, I'm sorry, to affect their object and quiet the minds of the inquiring one, even changing their own position to do it. Light has shone on many of these shepherds, but they would not acknowledge it and have changed their position a number of times to evade the truth and get away from the conclusions that they must come to if they continue in their former position. The power of truth tore up their foundation, but instead of yielding to it, they would get up another platform that they were not satisfied with themselves. And 
finally, she said, I, I saw that many of these shepherds had denied the past teachings of God. They have denied and rejected the glorious truths. Now, when you think about that for a moment, what is one of the biggest issues right now in our church? When we hear people say people don't want to hear about what we believed in or still should be believing in, they want smooth things. She said, she said, I saw that they were drunken with error and were leading on their flock to death. Many of the apostles truth devised mischief in their heads, upon their beds. And in the day they carry out their wicked devices to put down the truth and to get something new to interest the people and divert their mind from the precious, all-important truth. When you go to page 125, the question becomes, in what kind of meeting will angels cease their watchful care over us? Very important. She said that I was shown the necessity of those who believe that we are having the last message of mercy. What is that message, Saint? <laughs> All right, so within these 13 weeks and before the 13 week and after the 13 weeks, should we be given that message? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She says, I have been shown the necessity of those who believe that we are having the last message of mercy, being Amen. separate from those who are daily imbibing new errors. How many times have you heard other pastors? Uh, I've heard, you hear Brother Bud talk about this, Dennis Preby talk about this. I saw a little piece with Don Lemon recently, uh, Brother Dr. O. You know, people are trying to get away from present truth. They don't want to talk about the, what's supposedly the present truth for this time. She said, I saw that neither young nor old should attend their meetings. For, it's wrong to, for it is wrong to thus encourage them while they teach error. That is a deadly poison to the soul and teach for doctrines the commandments of men. The influence of such gatherings is not good. If God has delivered us from such darkness and error, we should stand fast in the liberty wherewith he has set us free and rejoice in the truth. She said, God is displeased with us when we go to listen to error and with, without being obliged to go, for unless he sends us to those meetings where error is forced home to the people by the power of the will, he will not keep us. The angels cease their watchful care over us, and we are left to buffetings to be darkened and weakened by him. And the power of his evil angels and the light around us becomes contaminated with the darkness. For all of you on this line who faithfully listen or watch Dr. O, how many times have you heard Dr. O say, there are people that want him to stop giving Sunday law updates, oh, yes. stop talking about the truth, mm -hmm. That we should focus on things like social justice. Let's talk about the goodness of Christ. That's it. And here she is going on about that. That's a lot in one city. 
And that's why I have chosen to do these in parts. So that's the end of part one of lesson five. Very similar to the lesson we had tonight. Fear God and give glory to him. Deliver his message, the last one, for a perishing world because probation is close. Any final comment? Well, then I'm happy then, Sister Gloria, Brother Gary, did not keep you to 11 o'clock. <laughs> I will sleep good tonight. <laughs> and, for, and I will hold on for those who need to get a copy of the book of um, the book of Revelation, that little study book. So there it is there. That's the one I will give out tomorrow. I use this constantly. I've used this in a lot of the lessons that we've covered. Mm -hmm. And I will hold on, as you asked last week, uh, Gary and Gloria, I will hold on to some copies of this so that those of you that are on here, if you cannot be at church, uh, we can make sure that you get it. And by the way, Sister Niebuhr, did you, I never followed up to see, did you actually get in the mail your quarterly? Yes, thank you. Uh, and okay. as you mentioned, that book, I'm looking forward to it too. All right, so I, I'll go ahead and send this one out so that thank you can you. get that as well. All right, any other final comment? Yeah, Brother Carl. Yes. Could you give that book to uh, Gloria for me? Yep. I will make sure tomorrow that before I give any of those book out, books out, I will put some to the side. Okay. Uh, and for those who are asking in church, uh, if I have, still have Sister Terry on, Sister Terry did yeah, order. I, uh, let me let you say, Sister Terry, about the Sabbath school books. Yes. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, what's the name? I, I called to, to pick those up and bring them to the church, and he said he would. I All called right, as so soon we, as I came up with you. So we'll have, for those of you that, you know, because we have run out, uh, we do have more. And God willing, they'll be there tomorrow so we can give those out. You, you, you said you got a, 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 stuff, a book on, on the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. This 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 one. In fact, every week that I have actually done a lesson on the three angels' message, when you the breakdowns of the verses that you've seen in the in these lessons from this book. Okay, because I, I got I got a friend. I have a friend who told me she wanted to do a study on the book of Revelation. And she's a minister. She's not you an Adventist love, minister. You would love this she, man. She, she said she wanted to do a, a, a study on the book of Revelation. I, I would love to give that to her. By, by the way, it is one of the few books. You remember when you guys always asked a question about um, the great multitude and 144,000? Actually, this book separates the two. It's one of the few books I've ever seen that separates the two. You don't find that that often. People don't want to do that anymore. And that's why when I gave the book out, now obviously you could take any other book that you want to use for it, but it definitely does go verse by verse. And what you uh, had tonight on Revelation 14, 12 was directly oh, from you. I'm you because you were with me. 
And I know some of you got it last week. I don't know if you got a chance to look at it. I know uh, Lillian here got one. I believe I gave one. Did I get that? No, Gloria and Gary, you didn't get one yet. Paul got has one. And I think Cheryl has one. And I'm not sure Kurt, if, if you got Don't one. Don't forget Thelma. I do have, like I said, I there's a set that I'm I'm not going to give out. That I'm going to hold that back so that others that need to get this book can get it. Uh, Paul, I did check into the one about Daniel. It is like this. Okay. There is one exactly verse by verse. And, and also the size is great. So if you have to take a book with you and open it up quick, and you know how much these cost? If you got for 36 of these, this is 96 cents a piece. Oh, it's 36. I thought it was 50. okay. Yeah, they come they come in a box of 36. Of 36. So for 36 and if, and if you buy the box, it's 96 cents a piece. That's that's like I don't know how that's incredible. Yes, because if you bought one copy, it would be four dollars. Yeah. Wow. Ninety six cents. That's how much it is for thirty six of those. That's, what book is that? The prophecy book. It's the book of it's the book of Revelation. Well, we got Revelation in the Bible though. Mm-hmm. Not the same. Well, remember when, when you were, <laughs> example tonight, when I said to you about Jesus coming from the East? Yeah. And it was, I, I, one of my goals this year as in terms of being a Sabbath school superintendent was to find way to get people back to reading the Bible. Whichever and any way that, that can be accomplished. Man, so then I would hear people say, like, for instance, uh, there were people that said, well, they needed Bible studies, Bible readings for the home. So at one point of the year, I gave those books out. We'll probably do that again. Revelation. I've had people in church saying they want to study Revelation. And can you find a quick, simple source that is that is very thorough? And it is. It's. Uh, I don't know how many of you follow the work of Vance Farrell, but Vance Farrell has done some awesome studies. I looked him up. Right? He's, he's, he's got a whole yes, I mean, it's, a, whole, a whole library of books he's written. And he and when you guys got that book, Bible Readings for the Home, he did that book. Oh, he did that book. That's yes. funny. I have that book. I didn't even look. Yeah, if you if you open if you open up the book right to the beginning, you will see his yeah. name. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And and th that company, Harvest Time, see, that's that old school. That's that people of the book. Yeah, that Harvest Time is pretty good because my cousin has a Adventist radio station up in Seattle, Washington, and he I hear about that group a lot. Harvest Time. Yeah. Uh, uh, the only, I guess, if there's supposedly a drawback, they obviously, in terms of their postage, that's the one drawback. You almost sometimes pay, pay as much for the postage as you pay for the, the collection of books. Wow. But I have come to the conclusion it's worth it. It just, it, to me, it is. 
It's just the real, I, I love their work. Uh, a lot of the present truth stuff, a lot of the Waymark books is there. And I don't know, I guess, guess I should ask you guys before closing, those of you that got the, the book on the book of Revelation, have you had a chance to look at any of the pages? Yes. Is it pretty straightforward? Does it seem overly complicated? Or does it seem direct? Encouraging? Yes, to read your Bible. Yes. yes. And it helps me to mark my Bible up. Carl, I have a small request. Yes. Uh, Dale Sanderson and I and several others are working on finding all of the people in our church that are shut in or they can't get out. And if you send me their name, um, I would appreciate it because we're, we're trying to reach those people. And uh, it it would really help us if you know somebody, either call myself or Dale. This and, may uh, help. The directory that Mary Green, because we, we're about to use uh, the directory that she has in terms of people who have not been coming to church, one of the supposed ways we're going to try to get people to come out for that May 26th thing is a text blast. So we get the numbers, you know, like when you get sort of like a robo call, there are companies and I found one that was like $13.99 a month. But if you, you can put up to 500 names in and they will send a blast out but also at the same time, if it's just when you want to call directly and not using text, she has, Mary has that list of everyone. And if you want tomorrow, because we're supposed to be working on getting, doing that work, because we're about to meet again next week. And part of the discussion of the next a uh, Sabbath school meeting is on communication, how to get out to people. So we're taking volunteers to move on to, to, to that. So that can be included. If you want, we can all get together tomorrow about that because Mary, Mary's been working on that. If I answered your question, I might have gone on. Right. And you might have said, I'm here. It's been nine o'clock yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to, and we're not going to go past nine. I told you. No. Well, what's the deal with nine o'clock? Um, it's, it's a minute after 8.59. <laughs> oh, it's Jared. It's people got to get their sleep. Brother Carl? Yes. There's a list that uh, Dale composed already. It's on um, the elders text, group text. Um, I think she can approach Dale and some of them are already being visited by the elders. So there's a list already of our shut-ins. Okay, didn't you, but didn't, um, Gloria, you said that you and Dale were looking for Yes, we're, we know about that list, Jumi. We're actually trying to find other people that are not on that list. Well, so far, so good, because she's shady on our text, and that's mm -hmm. all that we have, Miss Gloria. Oh, okay. The remaining people have died. Oh. Mm -hmm. The only one who has moved away is Joan Plank. But 
as of now, these are the ones that are remaining. Okay. Yes. I was helping her with the list that, you know, I had a couple of years ago, but it was not complete. Because um, Sandra Bartel used to be in charge of our shut-ins, and before she left, she handed me over to that ministry. And one by one, as they were dying, they were uh, sh she was being contacted by family. And she would reach to me and let me know this person died, this person died, this person died. And when uh, Dale put up a list and she said, everybody check, do you know anyone? Do you have anyone to add? And I think that's just all that we have left. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. So I, I, I think this um, meetings that we have says a good source. They got the question answered. And this is a good group. Yeah. Anybody want to close in prayer? And Martina, you got to get off that food. Oh, man, every time I see her, uh, which looks like, is that like, oh, man. Mm. All right, I'll try to ignore that for a moment. <laughs> I'll bring you on her. It just looks very good. Maybe whatever, next Sabbath. whatever that is, it just looks It'll be my birthday good. weekend. Thank you. All right. Anyone want to close in prayer? I can't hear you, Carl. I said, did anybody like to close in prayer? All right, then I will go ahead then. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. And you've heard our prayers this evening uh, to keep those and everyone from Richard to Ben to Mary Converse to anyone else who that is going through any disconsolence, sickness, bereavement, or anything else that may be a trial or trouble that they're going through. Ask Lord that we continue to do the work of this particular Friday night ministry that uh, the internet is clear that those who are on continue to come and find uh, praise and fellowship and an understanding of the word. May we tonight, as we rest now, may we carry the thoughts that we've learned this evening with us and to share with others tomorrow and on to the week that's ahead. May your angels watch over us. May the Holy Spirit be ever present in our minds and hearts. May we be obedient to thy word, to revere and obey and give you glory, which is should be our testimony, which be the way we live. May we work as much as possible daily on holiness as opposed to sin. For we love you, and therefore we should keep your commandments. I ask all of this, and uh, as my sister said earlier tonight, a wonderful hallelujah to you, Lord. I ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.